in this lesson we're going to finish our material. All right, so let's go back to our painted wood material. Now you'll notice that what we built in the last lesson was a wood material using this texture. But then we started attaching and multiplying and bringing together these different nodes to create a different effect. Now we've got this result here, and I'm pretty happy with that. And we can change this value here. Uh, this is going to be our paint color. We could change that to any color that we want. Um, but I want to add just a little bit more to this texture, and I want to add some roughness to it, and I also want to add a little bit of specularity to the paint color. So to do this, um, let's go ahead and bring in the spec map that I have prepared for this. If I scroll down, you'll see that I have this wood spec. It's kind of a dark color, and we want our wood to be uh, very dark. We don't want it to have a whole lot of uh, shiny spec on it. We only want that on the paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to actually let's hold down T and then left click and bring in that texture there. And if I take this and I plug that into my specular, you'll notice that it looks pretty good, but even on the painted areas, it's still very dull. The painted areas should look a little bit more shiny than that. So we have to work a little bit on our specularity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the painted information, and I'm going to use that with this specular information. So let's go ahead and use the same method that we used here. We're going to go ahead and alert that. So let's go ahead and hold down um, L on the keyboard and then left click, and there's our LERP. And we're going to plug in our specular map. We're going to plug that into A. Now what are we going to plug into B? Well, B, we want to use um, another color value. Um, we could use a color value, but I actually want to use just a numerical value, a value of 0 to 1. Now, numerical values in Unreal Engine 4 materials, they go from 0 to 1, and they also have a um, color um, equal to that. So whenever you think of the value of 0, you want to think of the color black. Whenever you think of the value 1, you want to think of the color white. Now, anything in between 0 and 1 is going to be a different value of gray. So to um, bring all of this together, let's go ahead and right click and let's bring in another node. But we're going to use a constant in this case. So we're going to go to constants and then constant. And notice that it just gives us a number. If we left click on that, you can see that 0 is the default value. But you'll also notice that we have these details that we can change that value. Now, this is going to be the default value of the object. So I can set this to 1 and hit Enter. And then we'll plug that into B. Now, what you'll notice here is that nothing is showing up on our material. The reason for that is we need to take the output of this and plug that into our specular. Now remember, we only want that to work on the painted areas. So we need to take this texture and plug that into the alpha, just like we did with this object. Now let's go ahead and plug this into specular. And there we go. Notice that you have the shininess on the paint, and then it's dull on the wood. Okay. Very good. Now we can come in and we can start to make adjustments to that value. So if I take that and I say, let's do 0.4. Notice the specularity will change on that. Okay. All right, now that has been plugged in. Let's get our roughness through our normal map. This can be done by going to your content browser and choosing the wood normal texture. Go back into your material, hold down T, left click, drop that as a texture sample, and let's drag that into our normal uh, property. Now with that, we've got this roughness, and that's looking much better. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that this uh, material can actually be instanced. Now you might be wondering, what is instance? What does that mean? There may be cases where I don't want a painted wood to be this white paint. Let's say that we want it to be 
um, a green paint or blue or even red, okay, whatever color you like. What I can do is I can create parameters on a material and then I can expose those and um, have the ability to make instanced materials. So to do that, we need to create some parameters inside of our material. And this is very easy to do. First thing is I want to be able to change this color from an instance material. I can't do that with the current node that's here. But what I can do is I can right click on it and I can convert it to a parameter. And basically a parameter allows me to access the information uh, from the material editor or the instanced material editor. Go ahead and convert that over to a parameter and you'll see that it creates the parameter but it also allows me to give it a name. So I'm going to call this paint color. I also have another value which is here and I want to convert this to a parameter. So if I right click on this, convert it to a parameter, I can give it a name. I'm going to call this paint spec power. That will allow me to adjust the, adjust the specularity of that paint. Now with those set, those are now parameters, but they don't take effect until we actually create instanced materials. So let's go ahead and apply this. That will compile the shader and the material, and then we can save that, and then we can now use that in our levels. So let's go ahead and go into our scene here. And if I grab my DT props folder, let's grab that crate mesh again. With that selected, go ahead and double click on it. And let's apply our material to this object. So that way it's the default material. Now before you can do that, you need to go back to your content browser, select the material you want to apply to this, and in this case, we're looking for painted wood. With that selected, go to your crate mesh in this static mesh editor and simply hit Assign Asset from Content Browser. And there we go. So there's that asset. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and save this. And then if I go into my content browser and go to Props, you'll notice that my crate now has that new material on it. Let's go ahead and drag this into the scene. So we can see that. And I'm just using the left mouse button to navigate through the viewport there. And with that, we want to be able to create an instanced material. So let's say that I want to create a material like this, but I want it to be a red color. To do this, we'll go to our materials. We'll select that painted wood material. Let me find that one more time. There it is. Then I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to create material instance. So it, it's going to create a copy of that, but it's now an instance. So what it's going to do is it's going to borrow information from the original. But we can make changes to this if needed. Now we can make changes to the parameters that we've already set. So if I double click on this new instance material, you'll notice that it brings up a material instance or a material editor but it's not exactly the same. Notice that I don't have the ability to bring in any more nodes. I can only change the parameters that we've already set for it. So for example, you can see the vector parameter. We have painted color. If I check that, it will allow me to change that color, and I can change it to something like red, okay, like this. And then I can saturate it a little bit, maybe make it a little bit darker, so that way it looks kind of old. And then simply hit OK. Now once I'm finished with that, I'll just simply hit Save. And then I can go back to my uh, level here, and you can see that painted wood instance. Now I can drag and drop that right onto my box, and I still have that original material. This original material is what's considered the master material. All instances will refer to the master material and will get most of their information from that aside from any of the parameters that we've set inside of that master material. So now that we've learned how to create materials and then how to create parameters on materials to make material instances, now we want to move on into our next lesson where we're going to talk about how to um, take these assets that we've created, we've populated inside of our content browser, 
and we're going to bring those into our world, and we're going to learn how to manipulate them.